Hello, my name is Max Frohr, and in this video, I want to cover the basics of building an idea using reference, forming composition, and the value of implementing Quixel Megascans into your Unreal Engine 4 workflow. I will also talk about using Agisoft Photoscan to photogrammetrize something from the real world, bringing it into Unreal Engine 4 using Maya and ZBrush. It's always good to have a style guide with the project you're working on, whether it's character or an environment or a prop, anything. Something that you can like set as your desktop background and just keep as a reminder so you don't get off topic or off track of what you're doing. And so these were some photos I gathered that I personally loved uh, before I built anything or even uh, drew anything. So with this top left one, you know, I just I love the chaotic overgrowth. It's, it's just something that's always really satisfying to see in movies and games too whether it's just all nature or, you know, with buildings. Um, again, just absolute mayhem of, of plants. And with this one, I actually really liked how thick the air was. You know? It's like really humid and intense. And uh, I think I like this one because of the river. And uh, yeah, again, just like great reference for, for putting stuff on your trees, for example. Tons of color ranges, and again, yeah, like this one was really nice with lighting and mood. So I, I would just, I highly recommend doing this. When it comes to gathering reference, I personally like to use Pinterest. It's it's a great, like, basically online visual dictionary of how to store anything you'd want, and uh, as well as starting to find something, because it's definitely a way to discover something you wouldn't necessarily expect to see in terms of art. Uh, so you can just go into one folder and I can show you natural nature examples of stuff that's really interesting like you know overgrown abandoned cars or trees growing up through buildings you know stuff that I've, I've personally never seen in real life uh, and wouldn't honestly think about unless I was exposed to this these thumbnails are projects that I'm currently working on and don't relate to this particular project. However, I find that their visual appeal relates very well to what I'm talking about. I personally find that drafting out thumbnails before going in and building anything is extremely helpful. Most of the time, my best idea isn't my first idea, so pushing myself to think outside the box usually helps me later down the road with coming up with something cool. I personally like to use the lasso tool in Photoshop to draft out thumbnails because it prevents me from getting stuck in any sort of detail-oriented mode. It just makes me focus on the shapes and leading the eye around, as well as depth. So I downloaded the Megascans textures and then created base models, what I want. I just roughed it out. My goal was mostly to just make a pretty image, not necessarily super optimize it. If I was going to optimize it, I would make sure that there'd be less translucency overlap. But just to get, you know, the basic idea down, I just wanted to sort of make the fern feel like a fern. Other than the tree, this was everything I used for set dressing. I have uh, the Spanish moss on the bottom right, ferns, uh, old, new, different species. And I use these for vines, mostly this. I used Ivy Gen to cake the tree in vines, but uh, to create certain patches or to fill in areas, I separated a chunk and then I could use that where I wanted to. So what's great with the Quixel materials is that it, when you download it, it gives you all the main texture maps that you'd need to just simply plug in. You have the diffuse, the roughness, the normal map, and the subsurface map. And I personally think the subsurface map is one of the more important maps because when it comes to lighting, that's what will really make the scene feel real when you get that underglow from the other lights that you put in the scene. To really emphasize the feeling of light blasting in from the left, I used several light shafts coming in between the branches, which I also thought worked with the uh, plants and foliage really well. Originally in the water shader, I had a depth fade to blend the water between the plants and the ground that uh, it came in contact with. However, I felt that it got rid of the thickness and the overall feeling of how the water should be in this environment. So instead, I just used algae and those little clovers to block the seams for when it came into contact with the roots and the ground around it. 
The goal of the water shader was to make it feel like light was dappling through the tree branches and hitting its surface. It's definitely the most complicated material out of everything in this environment, but it's still relatively simple for a water shader. It's a great idea to look at a lot of reference, whether it's real life photography or pieces of art that you find to be very successful. I usually collect my reference into a folder and once I find enough, I analyze what I like about each reference piece as well as what I don't like. I personally find it extremely helpful to sketch reference because it makes it easier to reproduce what I like and what I want to show in my own work. In both my screenshots, I used a subtle spiral effect using the rule of thirds to help lead the eye around. So these were some of the photos I took when I was going to photo scan this tree. I'm trying to just simply capture the whole thing going around it. But uh, the end result was actually pretty decent. Is in uh, Edgesoft. Obviously I couldn't get the whole top of the tree. I would have had to climb it. But it got enough for me to work with. I also experimented roughing out compositions in 3D space as well after I finished taking the scan into Maya. The initial scan had several anomalies and artifacts that gave it this melted candle wax feeling, so I took it into ZBrush to clean it up. I would definitely say that a limited palette of assets is preferred, I mean, not only for optimization, but also for just designing anything. Uh, you know, you want consistency with what you use. And, you know, to give an example, every tree in this scene is the exact same tree, just rotated. And there's only four different kinds of ferns, you know, different sizes. All the vines are essentially the same. There's, there's a little bit different ones occasionally that pop around, but you want to keep it consistent. So as I said earlier, the scene isn't optimized for gameplay. Like it runs around 30 frames per second, probably a little higher, but uh, it would not work for in-game. You can like look around and actually show you the lighting setup. A lot of these lights don't actually cast shadows. Uh, they just float around as like movable little, little bits of light. Like this was actually just to bring out the brightness in this, uh, these vines right here. So in this shot, this just didn't feel too dark. That way when your eye comes in, it kind of rolls around here and then it comes back. But it, like I can just show you for two seconds, there's uh, I just have some spotlights blasting down here to create a, a sun. I found that just using the directional light kind of flattens the image because it's just one force. It's This is less realistic, but you know, this is this is a game engine. This is, you can do whatever you want. If you just try to make it exactly like real life, it's, it's probably gonna come out more stale than it should. But I really enjoy lighting and composition and that was what I wanted to focus on, which was why I found Megascans to be fantastic because it let me focus on the side of the art that I wanted to dive into most. Okay, well that's everything. I just wanna thank Quixel for having me do this video. It was an honor to be contacted by them about this project. I hope you enjoyed watching this and learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me.